This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Guys, it's time to get geek, get awesome. It is the awesome cast episode 441 coming to you from the Sorgatron Media Studios here in the Beefview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter, video and podcasting professional. Yeah, that's my official title. Let's go with that. That, that, that sounds nice. That sounds nice. I, I've struggled for a while on one of the pod, client podcasts of what is my title? Who am I to your company? As, as a voice, and that's kind of the stuff that we've settled on. We have with us back in the studio after a week hiatus. He was on assignment up in the uh, Great White North. He wa- he is with us today, John Chichilla in studio. If I can find his button here, there he is. Do I even get my name up there? Uh, there it is. I forgot Whoa. to set up names though, so <laughs> we have yours, and that's it. <laughs> That's what I was I saw you doing. Brian Crawford earlier. That so. was what I was doing until I was distracted by a friend diversity on Facebook. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. This distraction situation. Back with us in uh, I, I, it was it was a this was a quick invite. And I'm glad that she could be here so so uh, suddenly. Chris Whitledge is back with us tonight. Well, you know I live for awesome. Cass. You do live for awesome, Cas. I'm like, hey, <laughs> you want to come back in like four hours and do a podcast with us? And Absolutely. here he is. Absolutely. And it seems like, well, it, it, it's it's appropriate because like every time we have you in, you have something new <laughs> that you're involved in. So, <laughs> Well, I, I don't know because it, it's been about six months. So maybe, you know. That, Has maybe, it been six months? Uh, yeah, I think I need to like, you know, accelerate timelines Yeah, we need something. to do this. Yeah. yeah, we need to do this. Yeah, one. I need to come up with better ideas or something. <laughs> I don't know. I need to get better about booking more people. The squeezy houses are pretty, pretty awesome. The squeezy, I like house. the squeezy house. I need to grab the squeezy yeah. house over there. But you know, what are you? Uh, what uh, quick, quick line? What are you up to these days? Well, um, last time we, you know, was on the show, I was uh, working for a nonprofit, and and now I'm I've gone back to the evil empire, <laughs> for profit work, and and uh, I'm working for a. Um, a private equity investment firm working with startups, which is actually quite fun and less stressful, believe it or not. Amazingly, than for a right? Profit. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm and excited. you can tell he's working for the Evil Empire because they have, um, you know, things like this wonderful squeezy house for a uh, a realty uh, app. <laughs> yeah, nonprofit could not afford it. No, no, house. no. You can't. Yeah, yeah. The foundations don't cents. really have the they overhead. Don't have to charge you fifty cents. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want one of these? Fifty cents. Yes. <laughs> For a donation of one hundred and fifty dollars, you can have a squeezy house. Yeah, you're not getting this from PBS. Uh, but no, this is for uh, Postamo at uh, Postamo dot com. Uh, that uh, that we're doing a little bit of work here actually here at the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios with the. I dropped it. I dropped it, but it's okay. It is foam. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're doing some work with uh, the Sidekick Media Services with some uh, some video work, and we were in here doing some recordings today. So, um, looking forward to share that when that gets uh, up and about as well. Yeah. Yes, so definitely. And of course, you're keeping an eye on things. We got a few great articles that you had even shared during uh, the group. So it's great to have you explain them because I have a feeling that you the the articles that you share are usually higher level, and I I probably do a poor job getting the gist of them. <laughs> Higher level, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he's reading like like artificial intelligent white papers over there. It seems half the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, I'm no Kenny Chen, but yeah, I try to keep I, up with it. <laughs> not a lot of people are Kenny no, Chen. He's no, a one of a kind. No, he's no. another guy we gotta get back on the show. No, They're doing a lot of stuff yeah. over there at the center. But anyways, this is the awesome cast that is uh, guided by the frustrated hand. I should probably toss her this. Um, uh, uh, I almost called it a Nerf house. Uh, <laughs> that's a branding problem. Yeah, we um, we don't have the type of budget. To, yeah, we'll get we'll get her branded nerf. So. Yeah, I tossed Whoa. the house. That was good. Wow, that was good. I didn't usually don't have that good arm. Producer Missy keeping 
uh, a frustrated hand on this show. Uh, but you can check out the Awesome Cast at awesomecast.com, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, tweet us at awesomecast, Facebook Awesome Cast, and that's where you guys can join us live every Tuesday uh, on uh, on there at 7 p.m. Eastern time, like our good friends. Crazy Krause is in the chat room. My mom is in the chat room. Brandon from K- the KC that's wa- listening to us on his brand new iPhone. Uh, Dave Ponder of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. And everybody else that jumps in there throughout the evening. Thank you, everybody, being part of the Awesome Cast community there. You can also be part of the community. We mentioned the Awesome Cast group on Facebook where a lot of you guys uh, do share some stories that we do uh, insert into the show uh, for the week and, and consider them for discussion. Uh, you can also, and please let me know if you guys have tried this, had any success with it. We're working out the bugs on it. Uh, you can also ask your Google Home to play uh, the Awesome Cast on your Google Music Podcast or ask your Amazon Echo, the A Train, if you will, to play Awesome Cast on TuneIn. You can get us through those services on those devices. And, of course, thank you to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com, that carry us Saturday mornings at 9 a.m., and our friends on the 405Media.com, that carry us every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time. And also a big thanks to our Patreon supporters at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast, our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level. That will begin a little bit of chat that we do before and after the show uh with awesome cast gold our friends matt weller john dicky DeGore, and john carmen the newest on the patreon list and our buddy the longest running patreon supporter at the fan of the show one dollar level michael fedor and of course if you have any questions concerns or <laughs> want to know more about being part of our studio audience or great advertising opportunities with awesome cast and the sorgatron media network hit up awesome cast at sorgatron media Dot com and have a chat with producer Missy over there with her stress ball house. Is it on your head? <laughs> it's like a please, crown. Please selfie that and, and put it out on the account for, for us, please, producer Missy. Uh, but anyways, it is time to get into our awesome things of the week. And uh, guys, and I know, Chilla, you deal with this every day, but hey, it's travel season. And you know what ha- what that means? I get to play with newer technology in cars. Now, my day-to-day is a Microsoft Sync with no screen in a 2012 Ford Escape. So upgrading to something where I have, say, Apple CarPlay is kind of a big deal for me still. So you're not you're saying you don't have Cortana in your car? I do not have Cortana in my car. I have the Ford lady, and I yell at the Ford lady, and basically the only voice thing I do is just say, switch to Bluetooth audio. So I can use my phone for all the stuff that I want to use. I literally never used any of the other sync features. Because <laughs> I don't think it like it doesn't do the app sync or anything like that. But there's no screen, so it wouldn't, right? So. I think if you plug a Zoom into it. Oh, a Zoom? <laughs> okay. You could probably use the uh, Zoom screen. anybody's got a line on a brown Zoom, let me know. And uh, we, we'll do something with this. But anyways, no, it was, um, it's was. it been about a year. Like As I mentioned, um, uh I usually look for the Chevy, the Chevy Malibus. I got a Chevy Sonic. By the way, thanks to a recommendation from my wife. Uh, I, in the Chevy Sonic, I went through the drive-thru and I saw it at Sonic Drive-In because it just connected. Um, but uh, You took your Sonic to Sonic. I took my Sonic to Sonic. Yeah, it was like the first thing I did. Uh, but, and, and did you play Sonic on your Game Gear? You know, I did not. I did and not your play Sonic my Game Sonic. Gear, but I do have Sonic on my phone. And I, I, Yeah, I should have. I really should have. Um, anyways, the point is... Um, there's a lot more happening with it, as you probably know, Chilla. Um, and I imagine these are kind of, as you load it up, it kind of pulls the features on, right? <clears throat> um, I was excited that I could use more than Apple Maps. Uh, it, it Waze, you use Waze and Google Maps. Waze and Google Maps worked. Uh, Google Play Music had direct access in there, which I think it did before now, I think of it. Did you, did you when you used, what map system did you use? I, whatever I wanted to at the time. Okay. Uh, it, it, but, so... I use Waze for general. I have places to get to. Like if I'm going to find the hotel or I was looking for some wrestling shows, like a long distance kind of thing like that. But usually Google Maps is what I use to say, okay, where's the nearest Walmart? Where's the places to eat? You know, more functional finding of destinations that I have. I don't already have like the address of the Holiday Inn, right? Um, so I got to use both in pretty decent context. Does, so did you notice, because this caught me off guard, did you notice that Google Maps doesn't rotate the map based on which direction you're pointing? Yes, and it bugged pointing? the shoot out of me. 
Um, but Apple Maps does. So I yeah. went to use Google. I'm like, oh, I want to give Google Maps a try. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a pain in the butt. I couldn't I couldn't navigate. If if I knew like if I was driving around here and yeah, needed it, that would be fine. But um, where when you're in a when you're in a land that you're not familiar with, um, trying to get out of downtown Nashville, mm-hmm. that was a problem. It was a, uh, thankfully it was like go down three blocks and you get on the highway, so it wasn't so bad. Uh, but it was still like, wow, if I pulled this up somewhere else, this would have been an issue. Yeah. Right. So, I had to kind of like turn my head like, okay, I'm pointed this way, but I'm, I need to make left. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like you got, you got, <laughs> we, we were talking about extra processes uh, earlier mm-hmm. uh, before the show. If you have like, you know, certain disabilities and stuff like this is kind of that I need to like also rotate in my head what's happening because my internal compass is now off. You know, as I'm in a new city in a different state and probably a different time zone and jet lagged plus this. And it's just, you know, I'm like, driving that way and the arrow is pointed. That it, way. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, wait, what? This doesn't make sense. This usually means my ways is wrong mm-hmm. and I need to like wait for it to correct itself. But um, no, it, it was, you know, I love when I get something like that because it's, so, it's something familiar. It's not OK. I have to pick up my phone and see what's or or. I, I do the trick where I take my phone and I put it behind the steering wheel. Because <laughs> if you're using Waze on the phone, it shows your speed. I use Waze as my speedometer more than anything um, <laughs> as, I, as, I, as I go. So it's like, well, I don't need to see anything else on my dash, right? Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Um, and, and it just works out for that. So it was nice to deal with the uh, upgraded uh, CarPlay. It is kind of nice because I do have like the Hertz Gold. So it's like, hey, go to the lot and pick a car, it, which just feels... Always feels weird doing it. Like it, it is a little bit of that Apple store walking out with that thing you bought on the on the phone thing, like experience. And then I'm just like looking and I'm like, all right, are they any Chevys? Okay, does that look like that has CarPlay in it? Like I'm I'm more meticulous than I probably should be in a Hertz Gold. No, block. but it's but it's good. It's a good thing. But it's like I want to have you, this thing for like four days. I want to have a good experience. Did you use Hey, you know who? Yes. To, to did you do any text messaging? Yes, there was text messaging, and I, and I can't remember if this has improved from the last time I did it because uh, uh, Missy uh, was a damn trooper this past weekend and and had has personally shot at least three wrestling shows across three days in two states um, and made sure everything was good with that. So there was some some communication that needed to happen, and it would it was the time of the day when I happened to be in the car and going somewhere, uh, whether it was you know two to a wrestling show or to to the the site for the event that i was working and and it would pull up and and i forgot that it reads you the text messages and you respond on it and and once you get the flow it's pretty fluid Mm -hmm. but i kept accidentally making it re-say her text message and then she sent me a picture and i was like well shit this is out (laughs) you know um but no it i like the i generally like the experience it's always interesting uh, if you've never uh worked with these um when you go to like you're at a stoplight in traffic and you're like, well, I'm going to pull up, you know, what was that email with my, you know, address for the holiday Inn or something. Right. And it actually pulls it away. Like it doesn't leave the maps up. If you leave an app that is not compatible with CarPlay, it just goes to the CarPlay. Like it goes to springboard. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, that's interesting. And I think that's a little bit of a reminder not to be distractive typing, looking at stuff on your phone. Um, also, it, it also meant I could never take a picture of my dashboard <laughs> when I'm like, Hey, look at this. And it's like, well, I can't because I, I, the devices will pull out when I'm, I'm pulling up a camera. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, that was interesting. Good to see the updates. It, it's definitely a lot more responsive. I think in this, I think in the one that I got, the screen was more responsive than the first one. Cause the first one was like, it's got all the iPhone stuff, but it's a push. Like it was a pressure oh. point screen. Versus this one had a little bit. It, it, it seemed to be just a touch, and and it was it was a little more fluid, a little more flawless. Um, it was probably a 2016, 2017 uh, Chevy Sonic. Uh, so it was um, it was it was a really good experience for me. So that's my awesome thing as I was traveling. Uh, Chris, what's yours? Well, um, as you know, I uh, always carry an interest in in. And developments with uh, virtual reality, mm-hmm. and uh, happy to say that uh, Smell-O-Vision has come to virtual oh, reality. Oh, you were talking about this earlier. Oh, but wait, 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 wait! <laughs> I, I gotta pull up this picture here. If you guys, yeah, you gotta, you, you, you look like it looks like you're playing paintball rather than virtual <laughs> reality. I, yeah, it was like, or or it looked like the front of a stormtrooper helmet without the uh, without the bit. helmet. Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, uh, a little bit. That's that's kind of fun. I love feel the heat, feel so, the cool. So apparently. <clears throat> 
uh, it will give you uh, sensory, extrasensory data uh, to make your experience more immersive in your virtual uh, world. Uh, it'll go hot if you're in the desert or cold if you're on hop. And um, it will also use uh, a number of different um, um, smell, I don't know, capsules basically is, is a, how it's described. There's an aroma cartridge according to the breakdown. Yes, and it here. will mix those aromas to create the environment that you're in. Um, uh, probably don't want to use that feature if you're in a junkyard or something like that. You might yeah, get yeah. a trash compactor on the <laughs> yeah. Star. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's probably, yeah. If, if you want that kind of reality, you know, more power to you. But uh, yeah, um, it might be nicer if you're walking through, you know, a, a field of flowers or something like that. Wow. But uh, yeah, so we're, we're getting to that, that Ready Player One uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, status uh, slowly but surely. Um, so, uh, now you're not just covering your eyes, you're covering your entire face. Um, you know, the haptic suits are, are just down the pike. So. Uh, uh, I, I, oh, go ahead. I found it interesting that they will do mist, like water mist. Like, I don't know if I want my expensive VR goggles spraying water. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it reminds me of, of, of these, like, you know, th this, th these 4D experiences you, you get. And, yep. Um, the amusement parks and things like that, you know, so I don't know if it's going to sting you or, or something like that, but, but, you know, you're getting the water spray and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you're, you're talking about if you're hooking it into, to like a hive or, or an Oculus, I mean, that's some expensive equipment. It is compatible. Mm -hmm. It looks like with like every, it's, every, yeah, every one it of is, them too. it is compatible with all of the, um, uh, the higher end, uh, VR devices as well as, uh, uh, the lower end of the market, uh, the Samsungs and things like that. So um, that's awesome. So, so I'm looking at the article and it's saying that they can generate up to 255 different scents. Um, what is the compatibility? Or is this just kind of a rolling out kind of situation? It looks like it's uh, it was founded. It was uh, funded under an hour on Kickstarter. Yeah, I, I I don't think the product is quite. Oh, out the on funding the is still yet. happening. Yeah, so, so it's still it's still being. And then funded. on top of that, they'll have to like I'm sure some kind of SDK or something to incorporate this in certain games. Yeah. So. Yeah. This looks cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's where I was kind of. Uh, I you know I can see okay hot cold and all and all that stuff, but how are you going to match it to any of the particular you know VR world that you're in? That that's. It that is. kind of uh, connection is is interesting. How they might uh, pull that off. Uh, Twenty three days ago, as of uh, record time here, with four hundred fifty backers, over a hundred thousand of their twenty thousand dollar goal um, uh, put in there. You can have yours for this is the uh, this is the launch special. Uh, you can get yours for two hundred and nine dollars. It looks like. That's around the same. It's not so, bad. Yeah, it's, it's, around, it's around the that's price points. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. That you at would all. expect. Yeah. So uh, we'll see how it, it and it is scheduled for shipping. I believe it said in August of this year. So, so there you go. If you want to smell your world, August of this year. Sometimes <laughs> the world isn't smelly enough, and you need to <laughs> virtually smell it. Uh, it is the feel real. Uh, no funny spelling, all one word. If you want to go check that out on Kickstarter and uh, the article. As we usually link in our show notes, is from the Gadgeteer. So, all right, Chilla, looks like you got some TV news. Yes, so I, it, made wait, my, wait, wait. I made my selection. This is the basement thing that you this were asking is, about. It's hanging on the wall. Hanging <laughs> on the wall. When do I get that tour, Chilla? Whenever you want to stop over. Oh, let's do this. Schedule this. <clears throat> um, so, I picked up the Samsung Series 8 65 inch. UHD 4K smart TV. I was super happy with the display in the I went I got it at Costco from mm -hmm. a from a color quality picture quality just comparing it to the LGs and the other devices in there. <clears throat> the fact that it had the Amazon Alexa works with AirPlay has Netflix a very large um, app market in fact and i haven't showed christopher th yet this th they actually have like a on-demand online tv it's like samsung tv 
And one of the channels on there is Minecraft TV. I haven't turned no. it on yet, but I'm super nervous when I do because that's all that's <laughs> ever going to be on there ever again. But because it's going to take me probably another week or three to get a cable box and whatnot down there, I have the Apple TV plugged into it, and then all of the apps that come with it is great. The interesting thing, and I think if you scroll about 60% down the page where you get to the one remote control, this totally threw me off. Because in the store, they didn't have the remote there, right? They just have the TV up on shelf, and you get to see movies playing on it and all that kind of stuff. The remote has like seven buttons. And I'll be honest with you, I still can't figure out how to adjust the volume. (laughs) <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> there's there's a button. There's a button for volume. Okay. Not an not an up button and a down button. It looks like there's a button for volume. I like, think you. I think what you have to do is you have to hit the volume button and then use the up and down. There's like a circle in the center that's like a. Oh, I hate those. Those are up, like the, down, left, right, like and the select. LGs that have like a joystick on the back for the menu instead of buttons. Yeah. So, yeah. But this has Bixby built in. Our friend, our Samsung uh, assistant. The B word. The B word. Um, it has Alexa built in. It has a number of things. I haven't gotten to totally take advantage of all the digital mm-hmm. side of it, but the picture quality. Watching, I've watched Avengers Infinity War probably three times. I've watched Iron Man 2 at least twice Mm -hmm. now keep in mind i'm down in the basement painting Mm -hmm. or i'm putting furniture together or i I was doing grout last night in the tile um are you buying 4k versions of all those or i have digital so boom 4k wait what do you mean Apple TV, it's I, it's free upgrade. Oh, that's right. So wait, wait, my, wait, 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 wait. All my content is for. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So all those all those Blu-rays that I'm getting and using the code and movies anywhere and it gets over on my Apple TV, all those are going to get bumped up to 4K when I finally make this leap. Wow. Yeah. So I'm really sad that I registered Bumblebee with Voodoo now. Ah, <laughs> uh, stupid Paramount. Get on get on board, Paramount. Get my OK Transformers over there. Anyways. But super impressed with the TV. I'll probably give a follow up in a month or two when I have everything. Well, you know what we have to, we need to do probably in late May. Let's do a tour. Okay. Of the All basement. Because right. everything will be down there. Everything will hopefully be set up. Um, all of the big stuff's done in my basement. Um, it's just kind of I have some trim work to paint, or I have like I had a small one foot by three foot area that i didn't tile that i didn't think i needed to tile how long has it taken you to rework your basement two and a half years two and a half years to make it the ultimate chilla basement yes and the back probably seven feet is done but everything that was down there is literally floor to ceiling behind i made a wall and put a door on it just so i could put stuff back there (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so. dedicated the house of chilla yes. well we'll see what the future uh looks like here in a little bit in may and we'll, we'll do that tour and see what we can do with that sounds so. great all right hey somebody else doing some cool stuff here on the sorgatron amenia network our good friends at the bardic mystery tour a band of bards solving mysteries while on tour at bardic mystery tour.com uh these guys got a really cool show like, like i said it, it it saved my it saved me getting that late night ride back from Dayton, Ohio for a for a shoot a couple months ago. Some great story, great D&D session. And of course, here on the show, we're a bunch of geeks and nerds talking tech each week. But what could be nerdier than uh, what could be nerdy and geeker than tech? How about Dungeons and Dragons? How about a D&D podcast? That's right. Our friends at Bardic Mystery regale the crowd with tales of rock band of bards on tour they kick in doors and solve mysteries and as an b- added bonus they write original songs you can go check it out and their original music you can shout out there on the front page uh over at bardic mystery tour.com a uh an, a newer member of the sorgatron media podcast network go check them out and thanks to those guys for being a part of the network with us and we're, we're, we're actually trying to schedule and uh, see if we can get them here on the awesome cast and a few other interesting things we have going on here in the coming weeks so keep an eye out for all of that 
So we do have a story from uh, the Riz. I guess we did have more group stories, but you're on the show, Chris. <laughs> so, uh, but real quick, um, there has been uh, news about PlayStation Five. I guess we. I guess it's that time, isn't it? Where um, we're hearing all the rumors we've talked about before about the discless Xbox. There's where I'll be that get announced today. Did it officially get announced? I, I, I haven't caught up with it. Um, uh, yeah, I dropped that in the in the doc. If I could find it, I, I um, thought I saw something. About but it. apparently, Sony. Uh, yeah, maybe everybody was because the Sony um, laid out the. And I realize I pulled this up on the wrong computer now. Uh, there are details for what is going to be known as the PlayStation 5, it seems. Um, it's going to be capable of 8K. How much was that TV? What was that TV set at, um, Chilla, that you just picked up? Mine's only 4K. It's only 4K. Are you telling me? I only me got 4Ks. You are already obsolete. <laughs> I got half the Ks necessary. Half the Ks necessary. To, but you're an Xbox person anyway. So. No, I have a PS4. I just okay. don't use it online, and I only own two discs. Jeez, you're just like it was a very expensive Spider-Man machine. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm gonna, I'm going to double the cost of my PlayStation when Iron Man comes out because now I'm gonna have to get the PSVR Mm -hmm. so I can play Iron Man. I keep seeing stuff from this, this, and it looks very, very interesting. Uh, Krauss actually has something in the chat room about uh, Xbox, but yeah, it's gonna be 8K. It's gonna have, of course, backwards compatibility with PS4. I'm glad we're not. Um, I mean, Sony was really bad about really kind of stutter stepping the backwards compatibility the last two generations. I mean, they've gone, they came around with it on PlayStation 4, of course. I think they had a, a, enough complaints from yes. from their community um, that loved some of the PS3 games mm-hmm. and you know wanted to play them. So well, e- even at the beginning of PS3, like they started with PS2 compatibility and then took it out in later models, right? <laughs> Yeah, it, they they've they've gone back and forth a little bit. Yeah, um, and I, I think you know, I think the community's called them out on. And the it. love for backward compatibility is kind of their fault. Yes, because they were so yes. clean with it on PlayStation One to Two. Yes. So yes, and and you know, the the three had tons of fans. Mm-hmm. Tons of fans. Um. Yeah. So uh, it's good to see that they're going to have that first off. Um, they said that they weren't really big on talking about the next gen VR plans. I think just expect you will have a better VR than you do have now. I mean, and the VR now is fantastic for what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, at the price point. Yeah. At the price point, yes. you can't beat it. It is, you know, other than having a Samsung phone and getting getting that VR unit, um, there's no better introductory thing. Like I think it's no. more accessible to people. I feel right because like how many it, it, PlayStation is like the most owned, I believe, console still. So now, was it like a two hundred dollar price point? That's a lot easier than most VR, for the VR setup. VR, I think it was, I think it's two fifty. Two fifty. I think it game, drops to like one fifty or two hundred. That's not bad. That's not bad at holidays, all. But so. the one thing, the one thing that surprised me, as I've never owned a PlayStation until recently, and I went back and got like the first PS4. I feel like they cobbled it together, like off of street parts in like <laughs> downtown Shenzhen, China. Jeez. I, why do you get that feeling? Because Just the, the feel of the unit? No, it's like the the wireless chipset in it only supports 802.11 2.4 gigahertz. How long ago was that? Not that long ago. But it's, I mean... My, my Xbox... My Xbox... One, the first gen one mm-hmm. supported N okay. and five gigahertz. Okay. Like th- just some of the, like I can't remove the batteries from the controller, which makes me kind of nervous. Like, yeah. Like it's stuff like that that I'm just like, did, did they really think this through? Is this like, was this a miss or was this really on purpose? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which that, I mean, it's just small things like that that most people may not notice. It feels like but I definitely did as if, a technology person. It feels like that first gen, we're just trying to keep that price cost as low as possible, and yeah, they're gonna chink up, they're gonna cheap on those those parts. But I look at it as, you know, it, not that it's as expensive as a. La- I mean, it is expensive as a laptop in some cases. But every penny <clears> counts <throat> when you're manufacturing something like that. Yeah, but so. I don't know um and uh kraus in the chat room is uh he did share with us that they uh, microsoft did officially announce this discless xbox one s so that's the s that is that's just the slimmer version that's not 4k right i put the youtube there's could we can we 
show a YouTube you want to you want to see the YouTube I want to see it. can you throw can you throw the sound uh, yeah uh, I can pull How it up we make an all digital Xbox one actually that was our only challenge it looks like it was gonna be fun. oh you don't have headphones we told on. them oh. it can't be done and they said ah. it oh, no. it's kind okay. of a it's kind of a fun Go video they're doing here it had never been done before except movies music books the solution was there all along but we just couldn't see it newspapers the almanac i guess it wasn't totally impossible we tried removing everything but we realized that would make it hard to play video games so we put some stuff back <laughs> we lost a lot of good people on this project but then we found it's a little it's a little bit fun Halo and Cubs turn 4B. i like these kind of Nancy commercials wasn't just yeah staring me in the face he's staring at me in the brain <laughs> <laughs> and they just delete the line for the DVD player, <laughs> which I have yet to use, other than watching a Blu-ray here or there. What would be funny is if you took the X, the new discless Xbox apart, and they just didn't put the hole in the case. So the drive was still in there. <laughs> like everything is there. It's all the same stuff, but you see, just like you just see, like an unhooked like wire hanging there of where the DVD player, like the Blu-ray player, hooked into, right? So, but there it is. I oh, mean, it they're does, putting a piece of tape over it. You put a piece of tape <laughs> over it. <laughs> There's the. There you go. It's like we just got all these Xbox S's hanging hanging around. What are we gonna well, do with these? They're not gonna redesign the chassis. No, no, and it's they did. They, they really did. They really, they just changed it so they're not putting the slot in there. And the in the insides, I I don't know if there's even any changes. I I, I can't wait for the. <laughs> I kind of do want to see the breakdown now and compare it to the, the like, well, you it's know, just an empty hole. What did we do with the space? <laughs> like a, a disk drive takes up a lot of space in there. Right. But anyways, they should make it like a fortune cookie where if you crack it open, you get like a little note inside. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings from the Xbox team. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you're expecting a disk, a disk unit in here. Guess what? We decided that it was not uh, what we were going to do here. I tell you what we are going to do here is talk about one of our uh, great supporters of this show for jeez uh, over five years at this point. Our friends are at Slice on Broadway up here in the uh, in, in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, as well as their uh, other locations in Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, where there's baseball happening. Uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, so go check them out today if you're here in the area. If you're visiting Pittsburgh, Carnegie PA is very nicely tucked right off of the highway to the airport. So if you are visiting, it's uh, it's, it's pretty easy for you guys to go pick it up, check it out. And thank uh, thank you to Slice on Broadway for feeding our guests here on the Awesome Cast. This is around dinner time uh, for a good long time here. So check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. All right, let's get into a menagerie of stories going on here. Oh, okay, I want to talk about uh, in my travels because uh, I do have a story about the Lyft Pass. But I did, I did experience. We've talked about scooters, right? The the rentable scooters that you can pick up for like you know a buck a minute or something. Um, and and Mary talked about how like this is a problem because you can literally like, get them and leave them anywhere. Nashville has the scooters, yeah, <laughs> and it was just. Like abandoned, uh, <laughs> is like abandoned littering of scooters all over the place. About four or five different brands I saw. At least one of them was on Uber. They had ones branded with a Lyft that you could do. And I actually pulled up the Lyft app and says, "Hey, there's a scooter like less than a minute away." Because I'm like, ah, I kind of parked. I was kind of cheap and parked like five blocks away. Maybe I'll take a scooter back. Right then, I'm like, no, I'm gonna hurt myself. Uh, <laughs> let's be honest about this. So the city is okay with them just leaving them anywhere. With I don't know if the city's <laughs> okay with it, but this is apparently something that happens. Like I, I took a picture. Oh, I, I can't pull it up here. Um, I, I, I took a picture, one picture of just them strewn about in like the, you know, the the flower bed be, beside the road and everything. Um, but they were just everywhere. Um, and, and there was I even saw it because we had a thing where um. Uh, our, our Baja event was kind of um, um, canceled and, and everybody had an extra day in Nashville, right? So I just saw some kids with Baja shirts, just like one was standing on the back of the scooter. They were doubling up on a scooter <laughs> and just like rolling by. By the way, they're Pitt Johnstown students. So shout out to Fuzzwad out there. Um, but uh, like, here's a picture of, if you guys are on video, it just uh, and there's one in the background there too. Um, just them strewn about, 
Just just like you left them. There's no there's no place to put them like the bikes in our city. The city bikes where there's a rack. You, you gotta drop it like it's hot. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't want to sound like I'm a prude, done. but that looks like a safety hazard to me. It yeah. is. Yeah. It absolutely <laughs> is. And, and, and you know, and we talked about like a, you know, it was California or somewhere we're talking about or San Francisco where there, well, there's somebody that goes around and collects them, right? And and this is um. But that one's sitting out on the sidewalk, and you know, you get somebody looking at their phone, walking down the sidewalk, not paying any attention, or they trip a, over, or it. riding a scooter down or the sidewalk, a, <laughs> looking at their phone, riding the scooter, I mean, then it or whatever. Come, it comes full yeah. circle at that point, right? Yeah. So. Uh, that just seems like a lawsuit. There's <laughs> a lot going on with it. We should start one of these companies, but make it pogo sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, what would you call it? Like, wait, 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 let's workshop this for a moment. Or pogo sticks, like like iPogo. No, we'll get sued by Apple. Pogo Plus. Pogo Plus. No, that's somebody else. That actually is a device, isn't it? Oh, is it? I think yeah, that's that thing that plugs in, and you can make it like a cloud drive. I, 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 I like your local. Pogatron. 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 Yeah, I like Pogatron. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, look forward to the Pogatron app uh, as we <laughs> distribute our. There's no way. There's no way. Just I mean, don't leave them good, in the what's flower a good, bed. What's a good travel word that begins with a P? Uh, well, uh, poo, pogo, pogo. I'm I'm bl- I'm blanking on this. Portal. Pogo portal. Pogo portal. <laughs> pogo, pogo, co- pogo pool. Pogo pool. Pogo there pool. You go. There you go. There. Now we've. Now you've started a company. Now I've started a company. <laughs> Hey Chris, the this company has something to let say. Let me talk about to your this. restaurant hey. company for a moment here. <laughs> the company will be called. Uh, I think I might have a little trouble selling it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work Sorry on. Sorry, isn't even listening. To me. Go ahead, go ahead, Missy. It's going to be Proceed Pogo. Oh, Proceed Pogo. Oh. That's why she gets the big bucks. That's fundable. <laughs> It's all about the name. <laughs> I, I need to hop into some of those pitch competition uh, competitions and work on it. Uh, we'll, we'll workshop this. It's coming. I'm gonna. We'll, we'll, I'll, g- I'll give you. Guys Are we a- including this as like our, our poor man trademark by by putting it out here on the show? Yes, absolutely. Right. It doesn't count because I put this out. Creative you know Commons. You should so. start to do. <laughs> so somebody can steal the company name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Sorg. You should start to advertise across your network as if this company exists. Mm. Yes, I should. Build up demand. And then you can you can get venture capital. Hold on a second. Let me let me work on something here. I'm on. I'm just gonna do this. We're doing it live. I uh, hold on. Hold on. Pogo pool, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, Chris. I'm, I'm sorry, John Chilla. What happened to John Chilla is here. Wait, was that the one we're using? Wait, what did you say? Pogo. Progress Pogo. That's right. It's the last Proceed one. Isn't Proceed isn't go forward. Pro. Hold on. Proceed. We're doing a visual here. Whoop. Proceed wow. Pogo. All Pro-deed. right, Chilla, Chilla, I want you to look right into that camera right there. What's up? Right, okay. <laughs> and I want you to sell me on Proceed Pogo. Hmm. <laughs> Have you ever been in one of those cities and there's scooters just strewn about? They're, they're all out. You can't find one or you're tripping over them. They've been run over by cars. They've hit other people walking, looking at their phone. That's where Proceed Pogo comes in. You can find a pogo stick anywhere and bounce your way to the bar. You can bounce your way back to your car. If you don't feel like walking that five blocks, just grab a pogo stick. Remember, proceedpogo.com. You can bounce over the scooters. You can bounce over the scooters. There you go. (laughs) There you go. That's right. Bounce around town with us at proceedpogo.com. There you go. We started a company. It's official now. Okay, <laughs> then we have other real news stories. Um, <laughs> what do you guys want to talk about in here? Did you, have you looked at the Black Magic? Uh, I, no, but I recommended it to all my wrestling friends. <laughs> okay. I didn't get to look at it yet, and it looks super interesting. It, it does, it does. No, it, it, what is this, so uh, uh, we'll, we'll pull up that article here. So Black Magic has released a free editing app, um, and, and their, their claim is going to help YouTubers. Um, um, uh, cut faster. It's a uh, DaVinci Resolve 16, and it's got an efficient, efficient cut mode. So, and this is the kind of thing that, and it is, I believe it is like it is a you know to get more of the features like the full on editing features, you do have to pay for it. Um, it's a two hundred ninety nine dollar product. But the free version, uh, is, you know, is going to have some of that eliminated. Uh, but you know, so many people just need that iMovie solution, mm-hmm. and and 
and I don't have that for the PC to recommend. So this looks like something that would help. Like again, wrestlers that are just looking to cut clips to put up. Well, I was impressed because it does does a couple of things, right? It, it does the cutting, importing, obviously, mm-hmm. trimming. It does dissolves create so you could do some kind of basic transition work. Creates creating titles, mixing audio, matching color from shot to shot. That's so all was, a lot of. That's color matching in it. Like that's, that's incredible. What they're saying. I, do, I mean, I'm sure it's not 100 percent the greatest thing versus getting in on a color wheel, but still. Yeah, but I mean, it gives you that used to be a whole yeah. app we had to yes. use in Final Cut Studio, and or you had to pay, and you had to pay for it. Yeah, it was and only in Final Cut Studio, and it was not an Apple app because they bought it from somebody else and shoehorned it in there. So it didn't have like any of the feel or any of the, you know, other than a little bit of round tripping in there. It was a pain in the butt. Anyways. Um, no, but I, I think this is a good option if anybody's just looking for a simple video. Don't have iMovie. Don't have an iPhone. You can throw iMovie on. Want something on a PC specifically. Uh, I'm sure it's going to run great. Just do quick videos on um, on your uh, uh, you know surface or something. Um, secondary thing that I was looking for because I was sitting in the airport and I didn't want to. I, I was pulling uh, the clip that I was showing uh, you earlier, Chris. Uh, the the GoPro um, yeah. getting yeah. hit by the Baja car yeah. this weekend. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to do something with this, but I have it on a PC because my Mac isn't really mobile right now. And I was like, I, I just want to cut this. Um, GoPro Quick, which also has an app on the phone, um, they have software for PC and Mac. And if you need something, again, if you just want a, just clip a, a piece of video. That will work with it, and you can render it out. Unfortunately, the biggest issue I had was it renders out as an AVI, and you can't put that into Facebook or Twitter or send it to my phone to put on places. You have to do a conversion. Thankfully, I have Adobe products, so I can convert. Um, and there's free converters for MP4 out there yeah, as well. Handbrake is great. Handbrake is <laughs> handbrake, amazing yeah. for that. It's not just for DVD ripping, folks. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, partner saying, and then have Google or Uber buy it in our Pogo. Or proceed pogo. I think you have the best commercial for GoPro now too. I mean, they always have these like beautiful, you know, it's on the surfboard. It's, yeah, it's when you're skydiving. But if you want to show off what that camera can do, um, you know, Sorg, you you managed to crash it, <laughs> crash it twice. Yes, and not destroy it. I mean, that's got to be the best commercial for GoPro. Quite literally, the the go the GoPro is going to hit twice, and at least in this last case, um, did better than the car did. Because <laughs> the car lost its 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 uh, shock, uh, its, its suspension system is just like sticking out. There's a, uh, I believe I did share it on Twitter, definitely on my Facebook together with the footage. Uh, so, and I think I did share it to the Awesome Cast group as well, so you guys can check that out. And it's a, it's a cheap. It's just a GoPro. I can't detach it from the 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 um, the the protector. Uh, the battery is built in. My brother hooked me up with it because it was like a hundred dollar one on clearance at Walmart. <laughs> so I paid like twenty five, thirty dollars for this thing, and it's been through so much. I was like, maybe I should get a new one. I was like, nah, I'm putting this one through hell until it goes. And and I don't even have like the waterproof back on it anymore. And I was by a creek. Anyways, anyways. <laughs> other than that, plenty plenty other things to touch on here. Um, other than me destroying hardware. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's uh, look at uh, Chris. Tell me, we already talked about feel real, but tell me about uh, gaming therapy and mental illness. These, so, these it, come up every once in a while. Yeah, we. I've seen this come up uh, a little bit, but normally when it comes up on a on a mental health feed, it comes up as gaming addiction, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we're always talking about not gaming the addiction, healing gaming properties, addiction. but yeah, they haven't looked so much at the healing properties that. Uh, gaming can have. And so this study actually found that gaming improved um, the the mental health uh, states for those with anxiety and depression. And so you start to think about it and you're like, oh, well, that kind of makes sense, right? You get these epic wins. That's that's an adrenaline rush, right? Oh, yeah. Especially, yeah, that would help with, with depression or, especially or on anxiety. Especially on a Fortnite or something, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, you know, it makes sense why they're starting to actually use gaming um, as part of as part of a, a therapy regimen uh, for uh, mental health disorders. So I think this is, you know, you, you couldn't ask for, for better. This is scientific data right here so that when, when your significant other says to you, you're playing games too much, right? You can say, look, I'm, I'm just, 
It's I'm therapy. I'm healing. It's therapy. This is exactly uh, so. what happens when when I'm getting stressed out and stuff. Um, uh, Missy will will be like, "Hey, you you should go play some video games," and I'll just go pull on some video games for a little bit, right? Yeah. You know, it, it is. And, and, and as long as I don't get in the, I have to beat this game, it's frustrating me, and no to move on. You know? <laughs> uh, I was talking about a couple of weeks ago how I was, like, bouncing between, like, Gears of War 2 and Halo 4 and, like, trying other games and say, N- you know what? I don't feel like muscling through this thing. Like, and it was a good, it was a good, it was a good experience for me. Yeah, I think you need to, to pick and choose something that would fit so you're not getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. um or something like that but it does it does make sense and i think in a therapy um environment it gets a person to actually start to open up this article is on headstuff.org that you uh included in here um they're including some interesting um um like this deep deep vr game and and there's a few kind of vr kind of nice things or even some things like alto's adventure and alto's odyssey Mm -hmm. um there is a just mindful mode where you can just play Mm-hmm. And 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 you know has the nice music and everything in it, and it's not the competitive. I need to try to get very further. relaxing. That monkey's yeah. not going to come after me, and, and no zombies. Or, is it a monkey? <laughs> like, what it comes after you in the in the middle? Because it was like the person on the it was the other person on the horse. It's a, a lemur. A lemur comes after you in the middle. Um, so so I, uh, I, they I they found uh, gaming to be therapeutic in in other um, situations as well. Um, so why not mental health? Um, there, there's a game that helps, uh, helps, uh, people that are fighting cancer. It, you're actually, you know, you're in the game, you're, you're, you're using your white blood cells to fight off an infection. And they found that it actually gets the brain thinking about healing, which helps you heal mm. faster. Mm. Um, so, you know, they, they found it, uh, to be beneficial in so many other ways that why not for mental health? I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it, yeah, there's there's a lot of possibilities here. I, I'm glad there's there's some positive science on this too. So, um, speaking of video games, might as well segue into that. Chilla, one of your favorite games is apparently um, putting something out here soon. <clears throat> yeah, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which I think we covered probably a couple months ago. Um, Marvel Ult- Ultimate Alliance Three will be out on the Switch. I got a copy of one on the Xbox 360. I believe it was a launch title. The, the that interesting I still haven't opened to get into because I need the, to find friends. I don't <laughs> think they talked about the storyline. They just talked about it coming when they announced it at first, and they didn't give a date. It said summer 2019. Hmm. The interesting thing is, is this is going to start where the end game finishes. No. So it's going to be a continuation of the movie, but they're also adding in because. Disney has all the rights now to everything. They're adding in like Spider Gwen and Miles Morales. They're what? adding in like and all the X Men. Well, video game wise, <clears throat> they usually they've done this before. They've done it before, yeah, but but not to this extent. Not but to if this they're, extent. If they're addressing the movie cinematic plus this, man, that's cool. Yeah, I'm super excited for this game to come out. If you get it, if in the um, article I linked to, if you scroll towards the bottom. They have a bigger picture of the cover that's not the full cover, and then they but they have a smaller picture of the um, the switch. It's a very this is a very classic looking uh, art that they're doing. Scroll there. scroll down a little bit. That yeah. t- click on that smaller thumbnail. Just click oh, on it because there's more. your there's your Captain Marvel. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, this is more comic than cinematic. From looks, I don't know why I can't shrink this down. Um, but from what I can tell, like you got your Captain Marvel, that looks more like comic book Captain Marvel and everything. You movie. got Venom in there. You got yeah. Storm, yeah. Thor, Groot. But these have been also they, these were usually like very good Marvel team. Of, and mm-hmm. I, as I was saying, we played um, Xbox Legend one and two on the GameCube, and we would have a group of people that got together like once a week, and we play for a few hours until we beat them. Um, like that's the way to go. And that's before we had like online capabilities that I believe you probably have with your first one of these. So one of one of my favorite games. Okay, I, I I need to definitely probably jump into that. Is it just a Switch? Yes, it's going to be a Switch exclusive. <laughs> Damn. Mm. Damn. Anyways, uh, oh hey, I saw this. Some I saw this from somebody complaining about it earlier, actually. But the Capcom <laughs> controller, it I, looks <clears throat> so weird, and somebody was complaining that it's a two hundred two hundred thirty dollar two hundred fifty dollar unit. 
that has 16 games from Capcom. But it is, I don't think people realize that is a high-end joystick that they're using. It's a high-end joystick. If, if you look closely, all the buttons are built in. Like, when you see the people coming to, like, the the Street Fighter competitions. and They, they bring, bring one of these. They bring one that uh, that looks like half, yeah, half of this. Yeah, you're not paying for the games at this, at this rate. The other thing that I thought was interesting is, to me, it looks like they're putting in games that were more upright like arcade versions mm-hmm. oh yeah that mega man is an mm-hmm. arcade game that mega man's um that version of strider is a, the arcade mm-hmm. game i remember playing in the movie theaters when i was a kid mm-hmm. um alien versus predator i think i played that at chuck e cheese um it, it is the uh cp1 and cp2 and ghosts. uh cp1 and cp2 hardware um uh, games that are in this this is of course roms uh, and it's got the HDMI, HDMI outputs and everything like that, of course. But like this is like a certain era of classic Capcom games, basically, uh, with this list. Like I said, Final Fight, Goals and Ghosts, uh, Giga Wing. And there's a couple of weird little, like, you know, I've never heard of some of these, but you always get those kind of um, in there. Cyber bosses in here, Captain Commando, Dark Stalkers. Like, and again, this is like the, the, the best era of fighting games. I think the newest one is probably Super Street Fighter turbo likely um so if you like 2d sprites <laughs> this is the freaking <laughs> thing to get so no i don't think that's bad for the price and again that is uh what was the official we were talking about like 250 dollars, but i think we were talking uh euros or something at the time uh, t- uh 200 euros 229 euro euros uh, i don't know the conversion rate on that that's 200 pounds or 200 pounds euros. i'm sorry um, which would probably put you at two fifty two hundred ninety eight dollars and seventy one cents. Ooh, so three hundred dollar unit. But again, it is a good joystick. If you if you want, like, and it comes with all the games, and it comes with all the games, <laughs> and it's two player, it's two joysticks. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's it's like you set that thing up, poke, hook up the nice TV, you basically have an arcade. So I mean, that's split the, it with your buddy, cut the thing in half, you're good to go. There you go. <laughs> Um, so that that's a really cool cool thing they got going on there. Um, I'm not gonna get into space because <laughs> there's a lot of space stuff. Um, there's a lot of really cool space stuff that happened this week actually. Uh, uh we do have wait, what's the mental what's the what's the mental health uh helping of uh Twitch karaoke? Actually, it's probably not gonna be good for your mental health now. I think about it. I'm thinking mm. about how Twitch is when I look at the chat room when I'm playing on Twitch. I can't imagine it being great when I'm singing on Twitch, but it was, was is that something that's new or something that's been around? Cause I've, there's I've been a beta seen, there's, Okay. There's been a beta. Cause I, a couple weeks ago I jumped on and I saw some people doing karaoke and I'm like, what console is this from? What's going on? What is now? this game? Right? Yeah. What is this game? And I, I watched it for all of probably seven to 10 seconds oh. and it was like, okay, next. But it was interesting. It'd be interesting. And so again, it's it's Twitch, um, Twitch sings, and I feel like there's a, we're we're gonna learn about sooner or later how this is gonna connect with like Amazon Echo for uh, machine learning, right? <laughs> so uh, they have a thousand plus songs. Um, so everything light to things that have a challenge, like singing like you're underwater. Interesting. Uh, so you can invite broadcasters in for duets. Uh, it, it's uh. That's a, that's you can a, hook it up to your Amazon Music subscription. <laughs> you know, we've been doing these. We've been I feel doing bad these. for the Amazon employees <laughs> yeah. that are going to have to transcribe this one. Oh no! <laughs> so, of you like, singing underwater. What is this? What is this? Why did a bunch of Amazon employees quit all of a sudden? Because we're like, we're not doing. You know, no, 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 no. All right. Well, hey. Um, want to give a shout out to another great supporter of the show, our friend Alexander Cars. Out there on the West Coast, I got to hang out with him a couple of weeks ago in L.A. Of course, around wrestling because it's me. Uh, but our good friend out there, you can go check him out at alexcars.media, K-H-R-S dot media. He's putting together puzzle design and media from branding to print and digital projects. You can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Go check him out today at alexcars.media to get started. And he is now actively in, in the middle of some projects with us these days, actually, uh, across the country. Thought I heard the producer messy click. 
Anyways, back at. Do you have something? Okay. All right. I thought I heard. The, I thought I heard her presence. Uh, we. She's registering proceed Pogo. Yes, she is <laughs> already taken care of. LLC. <laughs> uh, Chris, what's going on here that you, you want to plug? Uh, we have we have stress houses <laughs> with uh, postamo.com. Um. Nothing really to plug at the moment. Um, you know, shout out to uh, Rogue Laser Grounds though. That was oh, a, a that was lot great. of fun uh, playing. It's a it's a it's a great arena. You got to check it out before it disappears. I'm trying to get out there. Oh, you I got to see, I got to see the. I actually got to hold one of the guns at Steel City Con. Yeah. Uh, you need to do more than hold it. You need to shoot. Yes. It. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we had a, a lot of fun playing out there. So I'll, yeah. I'll give them a shout yeah, out. We were, we were the I don't have anything to plug. We were in the beta <laughs> testing and they let us go for like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like, what? It's been two hours. What? We're done. Oh. And, ga- and gave uh, gave us a free bottle of water afterwards because I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot. But we were, we were like helping them figure out how to kind of operate some of the games and yeah stuff that they yeah we, we tested out yeah. some of the some of the games got some quirks out for them hopefully um but it, it's a, it's a lot of fun it's uh one of the best arenas i've played on so awesome um it's better than any laser tag i've it's, done that for it's sure. better than anything in pittsburgh yeah um and it's you know up to par with some mm-hmm. of the uh bigger uh battlegrounds in like orlando and places like that so definitely check it out before it goes away it's a far cry from the laser tag i, I got to play like the first grade in Myrtle Beach back in like what was that? What's my math? Eighty six. <laughs> what it just looked like a light, you know. So. So, and uh, you, you know, it's it's very, it's not just the best arena. I mean, they've got the best, um, the best uh, the guns, si- guns as well. Phenomenal. Best system. I mean, you can, you know, you can upgrade your gun as you score points in the game, which mm. is cool. And I, I like ended up with a missile somehow. I didn't even know how I ended. It, but I just started firing it. I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So. And there was like one point where somebody dropped something, and like everybody in the room with me, like all died at the same time. Yeah, like there was some somebody kind of called in like a helicopter strike or something. It was like <laughs> everybody's dead. Like all, yeah. of our, like all of our guns <laughs> made this like, horrible sound, no, and there was like, like you are dead. It's like, what? <laughs> uh, no, it's great stuff, and even the setup with, that they have over there is um, like it looks like the, you're setting up for a Halo match. Yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so. it's really cool. So definitely, definitely check that out. Um, other than that. Uh, Talk to me in June. I might have some oh. some things in the works. So. Oh. <laughs> As always. <laughs> always, always, always on the hustle and the high side hustle and the main hustle for the side hustle and the main. <laughs> yeah, we have a, we're, we're going to do a couple, um, couple events in, in different neighborhoods this year. We, uh, we got a, a grant from Kaboom to do uh, nice. what they call play anywhere. And this is with universal wit, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And so we're, we're going to do a couple, um, uh, come out and, and play events where you know you can play uh board games card games uh bring your nerf gun uh mm. play play nerf in a warehouse um oh. you know we're maybe play some dodgeball um and then we have we'll bring out our taggers uh and and have a new game a new tagging game so well. no information yet but uh, uh no I'll, I'll have i'll have some more details later yeah keep an you. eye on universalwit.com yeah awesome yeah awesome uh, we got a lot of. We're actually doing a lot of kind of new stuff here uh, on the network as well. Uh, we'll, we'll have uh, some interviews, including streaming with uh, uh, Ray Lynn, uh, who just got back from her her tour of Japan, six weeks in Japan for uh, a wrestling promotion out there. So there's going to be like there's going to be a lot of like. So what was Japan like? And tell me about wrestling pandas. Uh, <laughs> if you've seen those videos on there, uh, so that's going to be tomorrow night on the uh, Indie Wrestling US uh, Facebook page. In on Indie Mayhem Show, uh, if you follow us on Twitter over there. Uh, we are also working on our first ever Dungeons & Dragons stream that we will be doing Friday night. Uh, we're kind of just figuring out how to stream it uh, in the studio here. Uh, and that's going to be uh, Bearcat and Friends, uh, our friend Keith Hot from the pro wrestling world. And we're, gonna have a, we're working on the lineup, but uh, that's going to be Friday night. Uh, probably going to start around 7 or so. And uh, if we can get all the tech and all the creator characters. Producer Missy will be participating, I want to point out. Wait, what? Well, I, I thought that was a thing. I, wait, didn't we not tell you about that? You're in the you're in the Facebook group. That doesn't mean I pay attention to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so watch out for that. And um, I think we are also planning another video game night uh, next Friday as well. Uh, next week here, we will be having John Carmen, Patreon supporter, 
will be <laughs> joining us on the show uh, once again. And we'll probably talk a lot about Lyft because he's been telling about some changes that they've been making to the driver's side. And we didn't talk about the um, drift. The, the, the drift? The drift left? The drift left. That could be interesting. Ooh, what is that? Uh, the <laughs> Lyft um, subscriber plans that uh, we had in the rundown here tonight, uh, which confused me as a, as a rider, I guess. It's nothing I'd subscribe to. And I've been using them like this month. But anyways, man, so close. I don't I don't know. I think, I yeah, no, I, using a scooter was probably going to be a bad idea. Just, just not, I mean, mm, yeah. Anyways, uh, John Chichilla, chillatech.net. Chill on the Twitters, John Chill on the Facebooks. There you go. At Sorgatron on the Twitter. Rebellious Flaw is producer Missy. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. Uh, we'll check you guys out next week, 7 p.m. Eastern time here on the Awesome Cast Facebook page. Please subscribe so you don't miss an episode if you're not hanging out with us here on Tuesday nights. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.